Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. Welcome back to the second video in the series on Level 3 Circular Motion. In the first video we talked about the different types of circular motion we're going to be meeting um, this year. And so the first two were banked corners and um, the, what I call tetherball. We're going to look at force diagrams of those two situations in this video. So a, a banked corner uh, can happen on a road. Another place it happens that you see it quite exaggerated is in a velodrome. It's where they race um, cycles around and around this, this big um, circuit. And the corners in that are banked. And the way that they build or design velodromes is, um, this is you know the top down view of that picture there. It is two circular um, sections joined by straight sections. So the ends, the corners, are uh, semicircles, circular motion, and they're on, on uh, an angle, so it's banked. So we've got banked circular motion. So here we've got our bus going around our banked um, corner there. We know, um, as always, there's a gravity force pointing down. Normal forces always point perpendicular to the surface, and so the surface you can see is on an angle, so that's why the normal force comes out there. Um, the way we go about doing this is we're always thinking in total forces that they are towards the center of the circle um, so put that in but then what does this look like in a vector addition diagram how do we get the right sizes of forces so I am always thinking um, I want to keep this idea of the total force in my head and work backwards so I start with my total force and then I'll draw in my FG and FN my uh, gravity force and normal force. So there's my total force. I've just moved to the to the left there, and add in my other forces, um, knowing that they're going to add up to that. The only way you can do that is if you make that triangle there, this vector addition diagram. So we've got a total force pointing towards the center of the circle. That's really important. That the triangle looks like that, and you've got this horizontal um, total force. How is that different? So the force diagrams we drew last year of something just rolling down a ramp, for example. So here on the right, we've got a car rolling down a, a steep hill, a, a ramp. It still has a normal force perpendicular to the surface and gravity force downwards. But what you find there is the normal force is smaller, so that the total force is down the hill. So if you look at those vector addition diagrams, the ones that look like triangles, and compare the two, you see the one on the right has the total force down the hill. The car will accelerate down the hill. Whereas the one on the left, the bus, has the total force towards the centre of the circle. The car will accelerate towards the centre of the circle. And for that to work, the normal force is larger for the objects going around circular motion than for objects rolling down the hill. And you can feel this. Um, if you were to go around this banked corner, you would feel this in being squashed into your seat more. Whenever you have a larger normal force on you, you feel heavier. You feel squashed more. So the other one we've got is tetherball. Tetherball works out very similar, except without a normal force, it has string attaching it, so there's going to be a tension force. So we'll think about after the child's hit the ball, so that the hand is no longer in contact with the ball, um, it travels in circular motion, there's only going to be two forces on that ball, a downwards force of gravity and um, a tension force, because gravity doesn't need to touch, it's a non-contact force, and the only other thing touching the ball at that point is the string. So there's only two forces on it. So we can have our two forces, I've drawn them out to the side here, and um, again the total force is towards the centre of the circle. So imagine the circle that this ball will trace out around the pole. If you draw an arrow towards the centre of that circle, that's where the total force points. And just like before, we add them up and we get a very similar looking triangle. The only difference is, instead of a normal force, we have a tension force. Cool, we'll see you in the next video.